Starting your day with gratitude can transform your life in ways you never imagined. As a Christian, you need to believe that gratitude is an essential part of your faith. It is something that you should practice daily. If the trees can give gratitude every morning, and the birds in the air can sing to Him, how much more you who is created in God's image and likeness? Gratitude is a powerful tool that can help you develop a positive mindset, strengthen your relationships and deepen your faith. The Bible is filled with verses that encourage every believer to give thanks in all circumstances. One such verse is found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 18, which says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. This means whether things are good or whether things are not good, give thanks. When you have your needs met, and when you don't have your needs met, give thanks. In any situation you may find yourself, always give thanks to God. Starting your day with gratitude is a simple yet powerful way to incorporate this principle into your daily routine. When you wake up in the morning, take a moment to thank God for the gift of life and for another day to serve Him. As you go about your day, continue to express gratitude for the blessings in your life, both big and small. Here are some benefits of starting your day with gratitude. Number 1. Gratitude promotes a positive mindset. Starting your day with gratitude can help you develop a positive mindset. When you focus on the things you are thankful for, you shift your focus away from the things that may be causing stress or anxiety in your life. Oftentimes, most people ignore what God has done for them in the past and they focus on what they are yet to achieve and where they are aiming to be. They have forgotten that they are not where they used to be. So instead of dwelling on the negative, choose to focus on the positive. This can help you feel more optimistic and hopeful about your day. As a Christian, you are called to have a positive outlook on life. In Philippians 4 verse 8, the Bible admonishes all Christians by telling them to think about things that are true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent and praiseworthy. When you focus on these things, we are less likely to be consumed by negative thoughts and emotions. Number 2. Gratitude strengthens relationships. Expressing gratitude can also help strengthen your relationships with others. When you express gratitude towards someone, you are acknowledging their value and the role they play in your life. This can help deepen your connection with them and foster a sense of appreciation and respect. Imagine surprising two of your sons and only one comes back to say thank you. <laughs> Trust me, you will want to do more for that child. You will love him more because he appreciates it. Also, as Christians, God doesn't want you to be an ingrate. He wants you to show appreciation to Him for all that He has done for you. This will deepen and strengthen the relationship between you and Him. By starting your day with gratitude, you can cultivate a habit of a deeper bond with your Maker. Number 3. Gratitude depends your faith. Starting your day with gratitude can also deepen your faith. When you express gratitude, 
you are acknowledging that all blessings come from God. This can help you develop a deeper sense of trust and reliance on God, knowing that He is the source of all good things in your life. In the book of Psalm 100 and verse 4, it says, Enter His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him and praise His name. By starting your day with gratitude, you are setting the tone for the rest of your day and reminding yourself of the goodness of God. Number 3. Gratitude can improve your physical health. Gratitude has also been shown to have a positive impact on your physical health. According to a study by Robert A. Emmons and Anjali Mizra, people who practiced gratitude reported better sleep, fewer symptoms of illness, and increased levels of energy compared to those who did not practice gratitude. As Christians, you are to take care of your body because it is the temple of God. By starting your day with gratitude, you are not only improving your mental and emotional health, but also your physical health. So if you have not been doing that, now is your chance. Before you proceed, please like, share and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to turn on the notification button. Now, let's pray. Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for my life and all you've done for me in the past. I thank you for all you are doing right now. And I thank you for what you are set to do. Please accept my thanks, Lord. I thank you for a new day. Thank you that your compassion is renewed every morning. Great is your faithfulness and your steadfast love towards me. I thank you for the air that I breathe in and out of my nostrils. I thank you because you have showered me with more love than I can imagine. I thank you because you have covered me under your wings of protection from the eyes of the evildoers who seek to destroy me. I thank you for being my God, my Savior, my Sustainer and my Provider. I thank you because I can boldly say that I am a freeborn because you have redeemed my soul from the fear of death. All things have passed away and all things have become new for me. Thank you, Jesus, for I have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. You need to understand that there's a path to righteousness and you can only be directed by God. That's why he said in the book of Jeremiah 33 and verse 3, which says, Call to me. And I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. God needs to show you that path. And in this, let's pray. Righteous God, I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commandments, neither through ignorance nor by willful disobedience. I have treasured and stored your word in my heart so that I will not sin against you. I pray that you strengthen me so that I can become spiritually mature and more like you in every aspect of my life. I declare that I will remain on your path of righteousness. Righteous God, I want to be more like you, so help me actively pursue righteousness and love. I do not want to waste my time being like the world, because the world can only offer me temporary 
unsatisfactory things. I choose to seek you because I know that you offer life, prosperity and honor. Your word says that the righteous will never be shaken and will be remembered forever. I declare that I will seek first your kingdom and your righteousness because I know that everything else that I need or may want will be given to me. I pray that righteousness motivates all of my actions, not self. I pray that you create in me a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me. Amen. Let me ask you, dear friend, have you ever contemplated the path to righteousness? If your answer is yes, you will realize that in your quest to live a life pleasing to God, you may find yourself seeking clarity and guidance. Thankfully, the Bible provides you with profound insights into the various routes that lead you close to righteousness. Let us explore some essential parts that can help you navigate the righteous journey of faith, drawing closer to God and reflecting His love in your life. Number one is the path of faith. To embark on the path of righteousness, faith is the foundation upon which everything stands. Trusting in God's character and promises, you open your heart to His leading. Faith prompts you to surrender your doubts, fears and insecurities, placing them in His hands. It empowers you to rely on God's grace and embrace His will in every circumstance. Through faith, you recognize that righteousness is not attained by works alone, but by accepting the righteousness of Christ through faith in His sacrificial death and resurrection. Here's what the Bible said about Father Abraham in the book of Romans, chapter 4 and verse 3. Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Even the book of Hebrews spoke about how the saints of old were considered righteous because of their faith. The conclusion then is, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11 and verse 6, which says, But without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Number two is the path of obedience. Righteousness is deeply connected to obedience. When you commit to following God's commandments, you align your life with his perfect will. The Bible says that obedience is born out of love for God. As you grow in your relationship with Him, obedience becomes a joyful response rather than a burdensome duty. By submitting to God's authority and seeking His guidance through prayer and scripture, you invite His transformative power into your life. Obedience helps you live in harmony with God's standards, reflecting His righteousness to the world. Number 3. The Path of Humility Humility is an essential path to righteousness. It involves recognizing your dependence on God and acknowledging your own limitations. A humble heart acknowledges that righteousness is a gift from God and not a result of personal achievements. It leads you to seek God's wisdom and grace, recognizing that your righteousness is found in Christ alone. Humility enables you to treat others with love, compassion and respect, reflecting the character of Christ in your interactions. As you humbly surrender your desires and ambitions to God, He exalts you in due time. Number 4. 
the path of forgiveness. Forgiveness is a transformative path to righteousness. Just as God extends His forgiveness to you through Christ, you are called to forgive others. When you choose forgiveness, you release the burdens of anger, resentment and bitterness, allowing God's healing and restoration to flow into your life. Forgiveness reflects God's character and it promotes reconciliation and unity within the body of Christ. By forgiving others, you participate in God's redemptive work, showcasing His righteousness and love to a broken world. So, my friend, as you journey on the path to righteousness, remember that it is a lifelong process filled with challenges and victories. Through faith, obedience, humility and forgiveness, you draw closer to God, becoming more like Christ each day. Make sure you embrace these paths with a sincere heart, seeking the guidance of the Holy Spirit and relying on God's grace. Remember that righteousness is not a result of your own efforts, but a gift from God, received through faith. Allow His righteousness to permeate your life, transforming your thoughts, words and actions. As you walk this path, may your life be a radiant reflection of God's righteousness, drawing others to the abundant life found in Him. What if I tell you that facing persecution is part of your journey as a believer as long as you are in this world? If Jesus, the Messiah, could face persecution, then believe me, you are not exempted. That is why Paul said in the book of Philippians chapter 3 that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold on that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So when you identify with Christ, persecution will come, but rejoice because it is worth it in the end. How do I know that? The book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 11 to 13 says, Blessed are you when they revel you and persecute you, and say all kinds of evil against you falsely, for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. I need you to take a pen and a book and to write down those areas of your life where you are currently facing persecution so that you can pray about them as we go into the prayers. Don't worry, you are not alone. If you have reading them down, let's go ahead and pray these prayers. Lord of power, I thank you for the fact that in Christ, I am united to millions of brothers and sisters around the world. Lord, many of us are not free to follow you. I ask that you grant us the strength to stand up and be counted for you in the face of opposition. 
As the Lord Jesus stood boldly and made a good confession before Pilate, empower us to make a good confession for you. Let us hold fast to the hope of reward on Judgment Day. Name above all names. You have called us to live for you and exhort one another to love and good deeds. In many regions and countries around the world right now, Christians are not permitted to meet. I pray that they may find a way. Give them safety and veil the eyes of those who would seek to prevent such gatherings. I thank you that even when we cannot meet, our unity and connection in Jesus is a greater communion than any physical gathering. Thank you for the unity we have in Christ. For this next prayer point, I need you to call the names of everyone you know close to you and far away. I pray now for my fellow believers who are prevented from accessing food, money, and other resources due to anti-Christian pressure. Please strengthen them, provide for them, and show them an increase in your grace. Father, my heart yearns for those Christians who have little access to reading scriptures. Many governments rightly recognize the power in your word, and so they attempt to harm your kingdom by suppressing the dissemination of the Bible. But your kingdom will prevail. Use us, your children, to spread the Bible into places that need your light, no matter the opposition we face. I pray on behalf of those who are in prison because of their confession in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the strength of their faith. May they hold on to the promise that you work all things together for the good of those who love you. Please give them the knowledge that your grace is sufficient for them. Thank you, Father. Amen. Lord, my shield, as you loosen the chains of Paul and Silas, and you open the gates for Peter to walk out of prison. Allow those believers who are trapped in oppression to leave. I ask for safety, especially for the young and the vulnerable. Open paths and sustain them in travel. Place fellow Christians in positions where they can assist. Please give them the trust that you are with them, whether it be in crossing a border, escaping from prison, or running from those who seek to harm. Father, have mercy on them and speed them on their way. As you pray for them, remember that you are also praying for yourself because the enemy is not happy that you took a stand with Christ. All-powerful Father, may your kingdom come and your will be done here on earth as in heaven. I pray that you remember faithful brothers and sisters who continue to proclaim the good news of your kingdom in the face of opposition. I know that no power on earth can stand against the coming of your kingdom in power. Even if violence should come, let those faithful preachers stand firm. Let this remind me to be standing in union with them to preach your gospel. O oh God, our strength you are our comfort and our hope. I pray for those believers who are separated from their families, their community, or even their spouses due to persecution. Be their rock and their peace. 
please bring them back to their loved ones by your hand. My heart is burdened for them and their suffering. Oh God, have mercy on your saints. Let us trust in you and hold fast to your gospel and know that there is nothing that can ever separate us from your love. Lord of unfailing love, you are bringing to yourself a people from every tribe, tongue, and nation. Our union is in Christ. In light of the freedom I have, it is hard to fully comprehend the depth of the suffering persecuted believers are experiencing. I ask that you please Put the burden in me to continue to keep them in my prayers. I also ask that other believers who are able to do so might reach out with hands of help to obey your command to love one another. Let us seek to view ourselves as one body. If you have prayed this prayer with all your heart, then believe me, God is very proud of you. If this video has blessed you and you would want to share your experience or persecution, please put it in the comment section. And if you have any questions, prayer points, you may want us to pray with you. Put it also in the comment section. I believe you have been blessed by this video. Have a great day.